Katy Perry's relationship with her mega-hit roar is complicated. Many of us remember Katy Perry's early 2000s seconds hit singles Hot and Cold, California Girls, and, of course, Roar. Since then, the American Idol judge has continued to write songs while being a wife and mother, presenting one of the most popular singing competition shows, and performing in her Las Vegas residency. But when any music artist racks up a long list of hits, they are bound to have a song or two they're not a total fan of. For Perry, that's Roar. When it was released on August 10, 2013, it became her eighth number one hit and was her fastest selling single up to that point. The song's co writer, Bonnie McKee, told Radio.com that the track was powerful for Perry. Its lyrics built on the line from the 1971 Helen Reddy song I Am Woman, which says, I am woman, hear me roar, during the time Perry was working through her divorce from Russell Brand. Recalling a painful divorce every time you sing a song is enough reason not to like it. However, dredging up old memories isn't the issue Perry cites as causing her complicated relationship with the empowering anthem. Katy Perry recently sat down with BuzzFeed to talk about regrets, accomplishments, and everything in between. When asked, what's your favorite song to perform live, and what's your least favorite? Perry started by saying, I love them all, but she didn't leave it at that. She named Firework and Roar as two songs she doesn't mind singing, especially because they're everybody's favorite, and she sings them at the end of her show as part of an explosive finale. However, Perry explained, it's just hard to reinterpret songs sometimes, every time you do a tour to keep them feeling fresh. Some songs are harder to remix than others. Believe us when we say we love trends and keeping things fresh, but sometimes there's nothing like a classic. While Perry may feel the pressure to change it up, fans likely still enjoy the traditional rendition of one of the pop star's biggest songs of all time. We've come a long way, Perry told Glamour 10 years after the song's premiere. Bisexuality, or any sort of fluidity, was not widely discussed at the time. If I had to create that song again, I'd probably make some changes. Lyrically, it contains a handful of tropes. The catchy music has previously sparked debate among both critics and the general public. It was first branded lesbian-friendly in 2008, but others have since argued that the lyrics reflect the trivialization of queer female sexuality and cultural norms that state that female sexuality exists for the pleasure of men. Katy Perry hasn't made any moves to re-record the song as of yet, but we wouldn't mind hearing what progressive lyrics the pop icon comes up with in the future.